Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 7 of the Elliot Loney Podcast. Today I was joined by Jackson O'Doherty, and if you've been living under a rock and you don't know who Jackson is, he is one of the most followed social media stars in Australia. He has had literally billions of views across his social media platforms, and he's just started an OnlyFans with his girlfriend, Maddie. And I'll tell you what, he is living life on his terms. He has monetized his brand, he is setting up his family, he is setting up himself, and uh, it's really, really interesting learning how he's done it in such an unorthodox way. He's living in LA, he's partying with Dan Bilzerian, he's hanging out with Logan Paul. The man is living the dream. In this podcast, he tells you how he's done it all. He talks very candidly about himself and uh, some of the issues and, and experiences he's had in his life. It's a great chat. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Don't forget to click the bell and subscribe uh, so you stay notified every time I upload a video uh, or, or a gag. And um, yeah, enjoy this one, guys. I think it's going to be a good one. Mr. Jackson O'Doherty, mate, welcome. And, uh, What's happening, dude? <laughs> no, man, not much, mate. It's been good to, it's good to have you on. I've, we've been chatting for a long time. And this is the first time I think we've officially actually had a conversation, even though we followed each I think, other. I think in years. person like this is the yeah. first time we've had a, had a conversation, yeah. Yeah, but we've messaged each other a lot on Insta, so it's good to find out. I've had a lot of dreams about this moment, but and here we are. <laughs> Wait, what's, what's been going on? Because you're over in LA at the moment, yeah? I am, dude. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just out here. Like, I just kind of got myself stuck here once this, like, pandemic shit happened. And, yeah, dude, I've been here pretty much all year. I've only been in Australia, like, three weeks this whole year. And um, I'm just kind of waiting, like, once, once – travel restrictions like go away and it's easy to get around again i'm going to probably come back home like i love it out here there's a lot of opportunity a lot of good people and a lot of stuff happening and it's definitely beneficial being here but it's i don't know dude it's like a rat race you know it's nothing like australia it's just so toxic out here and it's 100 miles an hour and it's good for a while like but it just yeah i don't know i'd, I'd definitely rather be home but yeah man i'm out in la <laughs> yeah so how come why did you go to la was it was it for your um new missile you got a girlfriend yet yeah, so, like, I would like to warn everybody watching right now, I'd like to say two quick things, because every other podcast I've been on, people have mentioned this. One, I've got ADHD, and I naturally speak very fast, so I'm not on drugs. Everyone seems to think that <laughs> whenever I do a podcast, I just speak so quick, and I ramble, ramble. I would just like to clarify that I'm not on any drugs, just meth and heroin. Say <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude, like, um, and if I ramble on for too long, just, just pull me up, dude. I, I can just talk for days, but... um. Yeah, dude, I came out in January. Um, we actually came out to go to Miami and we caught up with Vitaly. We actually watched Jake's fight and stuff like that in Miami, me and a few friends. And then after Miami, we went back to here to LA and we went to Dan Bilzerian's party and actually met my girl there. And we briefly knew each other, but like we kind of ended up going back together that night. We hung out and stuff. And ever since then, dude, we just kind of been together pretty much every day. It was just, it was weird, man. I've never, like, normally I get a bit, sick of girls company after a few days because you know women can be like they're just kind of annoying and <laughs> and whatever you know <laughs> but um and i'm sure women think the same of men but we've been together every day for like four months dude and we, we just get along like two best friends and it's been amazing man yeah man that's great to hear and uh it's it's amazing you bring up some of those names because i think i told you off air before some of the people that you brought up like dan bilzeri and jake yeah, yeah. they don't even seem like real humans to me they seem like aliens nah. you know? Like yeah, dude. <laughs> no, they're, they're just normal people, man. They're the same as you and I. They, they're cool though, dude. Like, they're cool people. They're very nice and stuff like that. It's just, you know, it's just social media, dude. It, it's just a misleading fucking world, man. And everyone's cool, dude. There's a lot of people I've met in social media who you would think would just be kind of like, you know, shitty people, but you meet them and they're fucking awesome, dude. Like, they're really nice yeah. people and they're, yeah. and it's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, that happens across the board, mate. And there's so much stuff I want to talk to you about, everything that's going on in your life. And we'll get to that soon. But before we, Get to Can the... we do it another day, dude? I'm probably going to go. Just... <laughs> He's wrapping me up. He's wrapping me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a reason we haven't met in person yet. That's probably why. Is, uh, I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, man, I'm really interested to, to know about the early stages of your life and what life was like for you growing up as a kid. Yeah. So, um, you know, what were you like as a kid? What was your home life like? Can you tell us a bit about that? For sure, man. Yeah, I was... I've pretty much just been the same old me my whole life, dude. I've just grown kind of smarter and stronger with the years, dude, as we do, you know, like I've just always been kind of that class clown, either people, either I entertain people or I annoy people. You know what I mean? People either love it or hate it. I've just, ever since a kid, dude, like whether it was in the kindergarten, man, I just like to, I guess you could call it attention seeking, but it's just like, I just, I like to just see people laugh, dude. You know, like I've been, I got bullied a bit in school and I just see some horrible shit happening to people around the world. There's so much, negativity everywhere in the world and 
I don't know. I just, ever since I like was making people laugh from my stupidity and my weirdness and my jokes and the random shit I did, as I got older and older, I just enjoyed it more and more. And I just decided this is what I'm going to be, you know, maybe I'm not going to get a great job because I'm pretty silly and blah, blah, but that's fine. Like, I just want to be happy, make people laugh because seeing people laugh and smile, whether it's laughing at me or with me, I just want to see people happy, dude. And it makes me feel good. But yeah, dude, I grew up in just a normal family and we did, we didn't, we didn't go without, but we, we were a pretty poor family growing up, you know, but I had great parents. I had really, really good parents, my mum and dad, both working multiple jobs to support everything. And I had a really good, really good childhood, dude. Like just the average normal Australian childhood, man. We didn't go without, but it was a pretty middle-class family, poor family. And yeah, dude, we just grew up and same old shit, just playing sports and stuff like that, just being weird. And yeah, dude, now it's cool, man. Like being able to do this stuff and have this opportunity and with social media and where the world's at, you know, being able to make not just money to live like with what I love doing you know, I'm making enough money to help my mum and dad pay off their mortgages they're not together anymore I'm helping them both pay off their mortgages now so they can hopefully retire a few years earlier which is fucking amazing dude like that's that's better than anything you know I that's yeah. yeah you can't compare a feeling when you look at like my mum and dad worked so fucking religiously hard that my dad's been a tiler for 40 years on his hands and knees just tiling floor and walls and he loves it he's, he's a hard worker yeah, hard and, um, I used to work with I used to work with him a lot. We used to argue a lot when I'd work with him because I was just useless. But <laughs> my mum would always work like a job or two at a time just to make sure we never went without food and the roof over our heads. And now that I'm still pretty young, dude, I'm only 26, and I feel I'm at a good age, man. I'm being able to support my mom, my dad, my sister. You know, I'm helping out everybody around me as much as I possibly can, and it's just it's just crazy, dude. It's a really humbling feeling. Man, that's um. That's crazy to think about as well, because one of the questions, one of the questions I had here was like, a lot of the teachers that I had growing up would, would drill into me, mate, you've got to study hard, you've got to work hard, you've got to get that nine to five, you've got to go to college, you've got to go to uni, you know, and you've, if, if life was a video game, right, you'd basically, you've basically typed in the cheat code. And Dude, you have it. no idea. I literally, you know? say, I said this to somebody maybe a week ago, I said to me, dude, like, life is, to me, life just felt like a fucking video game, dude. It's like, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto, just minus all the killings and stealing cars and shit. It's just like you're running around. Everyone's just in their own video game. Dude. Everyone's just doing what they think's right and trying to just do the right thing and make money to live, eat, do whatever the fuck they want to do, man. It's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that, that leads me to my, my question, which is kind of like when you were a kid, did, did you always know that you were unique and different and you carve out a career path like this? Because you, no one else probably would have seen this coming. You know what I mean? Like, Social media has no. only been around for so long. I mean, when I was a I kid, think, you know, you know what's crazy, crazy, dude? I never, I never had the the thought or ambition, or I didn't really want to be like well known or famous in kind of any sense. I didn't give a shit. Like, I, I, I just, I just wanted to make people laugh, and I was happy to work a job doing personal training, construction, whatever. I just wanted to do silly things, you know. And Jackass was kind of a turning point for me when Jackass came out, and. Me and my cousin and a few of my friends growing up, we would watch Jackass and then we were like 12 or 13, maybe at the time, maybe 14 max. And before you know it, me and my cousin are going down huge fucking roads and hills and trolleys and we're just getting fucked up. I remember like my cousin <laughs> broke his leg. And we're That's jumping so funny and, too. Because it literally dude, says in all of the sketches and like all the skits that they do, it's like, do not try this at home. <laughs> exactly. Just like, the first thing I went and did. <laughs> I'm like, fuck that. I want to go do this shit. <laughs> And like I saw one of the ones where Bear Margera, they were doing that thing where they hit the thing and there's a dildo that goes up and they're trying to get it in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how like if this is G rated or M, just let me know if there's anything bad I'm saying. But yeah, dude, and I just I just I just really enjoyed watching Jackass and I said, fuck. Like because they reminded me a bit of me and the boys. I think they were relatable to a lot of young, mm. rowdy dudes who played like rugby and just That's rough true. dudes who like to just muck around and have fun. And that was kind of a turning point where I thought whoa, these guys are in like, not just like MTV now, they're getting like movies like Jackass 2 came out, I was in the cinemas and I'm like, fuck. Man, man. And then believe it or not, dude, you know the Janoskians? Yeah, yeah. The Janoskians, I saw them on TV when I was maybe, fuck, I would have been pretty similar age to them when they kind of blew up, maybe 15 or something. Um, I remember seeing them and I was like, okay, cool. And now there's a group of Australian dudes doing, not Jackass, but like pranks and having fun and they're blowing up and they're touring around at shopping centers and people are happy to see them and, that kind of clicked into like reality then because like I said, we didn't grow up with like a great deal. I didn't have like a phone and computers when I was young or anything like that. We just had what we could. We were just getting DVDs for Christmas to watch like Jackass or all my neighbors had MTV and like Foxtel. So after school, I'd be running over to just to 
watched Foxtel at the neighbor's houses with them. And that was kind of the turning point where I thought, you know what, fuck it. Like, I don't care about making money. I just want to do this shit. I want to like, if I can just do this and have fun, like whatever. I know we didn't get many Christmas presents growing up or anything like that. And I remember my mum, one of the cool first presents she had bought me was like a little Olympus Master 2 maybe. It was like a digital underwater camera or some shit. And when she gave me that, me and my cousin started filming us through things. And we had MySpace at the time. And we started posting just, because <laughs> you can only have one video at a time on your MySpace wall. And I remember we were posting, I was using like Microsoft or Windows Movie Maker, just making shitty little edits of us, just going down hills and office chairs, jumping off cliffs and the bushes. And before you knew it, dude, I was just doing that for fun. And then obviously Facebook came out and then I got into Facebook when I was like 16, 17. And I got an iPhone when I was about 17, maybe. And I just started posting random videos of me at work, just being an idiot on a construction site. And I still didn't give a shit about making money. I was just going along with life, dude. And yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I remember when I fractured my skull when I was 18 as well, was an eye opener because I wanted to play rugby and do shit. And then I couldn't. And How did I moved you do that? that? Um, I was in the back of a truck. It was, I, was about seven, I was 17. It was like, I was on the back of a truck up in Gold Coast in Service Paradise. And we were there for New Year's. And I grew up down in Newcastle. So we like did a big road trip. And all the boys had a big fucking vendor up in like the Gold Coast. We all had like IDs. We could get in wherever we wanted to and stuff like yeah. that. And IDs to anybody watching for the police. It was, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, dude, we went up to the Gold Coast and like we bended hard. And I think it was like 6 a.m. on the first. It was the New Year's. And it was like the first day of the year. And I was on the back of a truck. And I can't remember anything, but we we're just like going dark, dark. And we we're ducking them concrete poles that hang down in car parks. And I come up a bit early and it's just fucking clean me right up. And um, everyone thinks that that's what kind of made me be a bit loopy and a bit weird, but I was probably worse before that fucking head knock, to be honest. But um, yeah, probably straighten you out. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't work, couldn't play sports, couldn't do a lot, dude. So I was just sat inside. And honestly, dude, like I was watching TV at my mum's place, just in her little apartment, and a, an ad came on TV for a thing called London Pub Company. And it was like $400, and you ring them up and you pay them, and they find you a place to work and live, get you a SIM card and a bank account in London. And then I waited a few months and the day I turned 18, I moved out to London on my own. And I just went over there and just just working in nightclubs and bars and all that sort of shit. And I just met people over there and just started learning a lot. And I just got away from everyone I grew up with and just got out of the small town, dude, because where I grew up is very small. And being there, I just kind of like see more and more people become a success on YouTube and this thing and that. And I came home and I said, I'm not interested in YouTube yet. Like, I'm just going to make a Facebook page and just see where it goes, dude. And this was about maybe five years ago, five and a half years ago, I made my Facebook page and... I just started doing videos. None of my friends wanted to get involved. No one wanted to help. No one wanted to like really see me do that well. Like I tried to convince some friends to like, let's make a group and do some funny shit, but people would only come do it for an hour every few weeks because they were worried about losing their jobs or no one believed in the vision like I did. And that's when I knew like, I'm just going to fucking do this. I'm just going to make it work. You know, it's plan A for me. I'm not, I don't have a plan B and I have a plan C. This is it. This is all I want to fucking do. Yeah. And I studied and I just went back to Australia. I was studying personal training and making videos and then, once I started getting little bits of money and stuff, I just thought, and I was getting treated like shit where I was working, like I was studying at TAFE and I was doing um, personal training, but then I was working in a pub, working for my dad doing laboring when I was about 20, 21 and just getting treated like shit all the time at the pub. And I just said, fuck this, I'm over it. Quit on the spot. I had like $600 in my bank and then I just hustled hard, dude. And just kind of slowly progressed from there, man. And now I'm here. <laughs> man, it's actually fascinating. And like, we're, we're going to get to that pretty soon about where, what, what you've been able to do and, and how many followers you've been able to cultivate and, and some of the boxes you've ticked so far in your career. It's like, man, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's mind blowing. You know, some of the numbers that you've been <laughs> able to achieve, like mind blowing. But yeah, um, my, one of the questions I have here was when did you first, like take us back to the moment you made your first viral video and when did you realize like, Oh my God, like my life's changed. Like I'm getting recognized everywhere. Yeah, I dude. Like, well, the thing for me, bro, is, as I said, I grew up in a small town, yeah, so the population is like 5,000 where I grew up. I grew up an hour north of Newcastle, and it's it's a really small place. No one, okay. people know of it, but no one really goes there to live. It's like a retirement village, dude. It's just mm. quiet, and everyone knows everyone, and I remember, like, I wouldn't have been recognized because I lived there, and everyone, we all knew each other anyway, you know, but the first viral video I did was me in the gym, and it, I can't remember what I even called it, dude, and it was just, like, something about training hard, but it was a big piss take, and I was in my undies in the gym, and I was, like, doing shoulder press and screaming really fucking loud and I, I went I, I posted the video and I was having dinner with my friend and I was looking and I was like whoa and he's like well like dude this has like 1,800 views and I was getting like 500 views before and he goes oh that's pretty sick I said no but it's like less than an hour normally I don't get a thousand views for like 24 hours because I knew all my stats and yeah I went to bed and it had like 9,000 views and then I woke up the next morning and forgot to look at my phone because I forgot all about it and then 
by lunchtime, I looked at my phone, looked at Facebook, and it had like 150,000 views. And I was like, oh, when I grown 5K on Facebook, and I was showing all my friends, I was stoked. And within three days, I had like 12 million views, man. And it just kept going and going and going. And then that kind of gave me a good start, man. It got me to about 40 or 50K on Facebook. And then I just kept, kept it going, man. I was working, I was copying shit from people. I was getting a lot of hate from a lot of people I grew up with because that's just what happens in a small town, man. You know, I understand it. I don't hold grudges, whatever. I just want to keep getting ahead, man. And I just kept filming two or three random videos every week and just kept posting and posting and posting and working and and then, like I said, I quit my job and I didn't have much money at the time. And then I kind of made a video called Tradies in the Future about a year later. And I was on like a hoverboard doing like construction work. And that was on the news. And some company, Duke and Media, offered me like $1,000 to buy the rights to it. And I just said, fuck it, $1,000? Hell yeah, take it. Take whatever. <laughs> Fucking come yeah. fuck my sister for $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, $1,000 is sick. So I took that thousand dollars and I was like, fuck, this is sick. And I remember splitting it with my girlfriend at the time because she was supporting me a lot and she helped me out. And it was nice, man. She, she helped me out a lot and, and, and it was good. So I split the money with her, went had a nice dinner and shit. And we just kept on going, dude. And then I did that kangaroo video and that one kind of really went viral. The kangaroo, pet kangaroo video. I'm not sure if you saw that one. I've seen it, man. I remember you were on the Today Show and you went like, you did yeah. like a bit of a media run with it. I remember seeing it. I did, it. dude. Yeah. I, went, I went on the Today Show. I went on a live Today Show and I wore like a Justin Bieber t-shirt, took flowers for Sonic Kruger <laughs> and shit. And, and that, that was kind of like, okay, this is the this is the turning point. I still wasn't making a great deal of money, but it was like, okay, I'm well on my way now. I had like three, 400K on Facebook and I was like, all right, it's the path's getting clearer. I know which videos get more traction and I know which videos don't, you know, and then I moved to Newcastle, which is an hour away. And then the hate and the toxic people just came more and more. And, you know, it, it was weird at the time, dude, I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. Like it didn't, you know, it bothered me, but it didn't stop me is what I'm, you know, like it was weird, dude, because I'm a pretty nice person deep down, dude. And I, and I got good intentions for the world, but you know, moving to a town and, you know, being around thousands of people, you've, you've barely met, you haven't done anything wrong by, you haven't said anything bad about them, you've never done anything mean to them. They're just commenting such hateful shit that sharing your post saying you try hard, you're an attention seeker, you're desperate, you're not funny. And I was just like, whatever, man, whatever. Like, I'm just gonna, it's kind of shitty and it's just whack, but fuck it, man. I just took it for motivation. It just fueled me, man. I just kept filming and filming and ignoring it and barely paid attention to it. And I just said, fuck it, man. If people, the way I look at it, dude, is I've never really gone out just hating on people. It's like, if, if you, like, no happy or successful people hate on people, dude. You know, it's like, 100%. I don't, I don't live my life with hatred, man. You know, I don't really hate anybody. There's like, there's a lot of things I dislike about the world, but I don't nah, purely man. hate people, dude. Like, I couldn't agree more with you, mate. Like, honestly, yeah. when I see a negative comment on my Facebook or YouTube, which I'm sure everyone gets who puts himself oh, yeah. out there like we do, it's like, man, I've never written a negative comment on anyone's stuff. Dude, like, I don't even never. understand if you've got nothing positive to say, don't say it at all. What goes through these people's heads that they feel so know, bad man. about themselves that they feel compelled to write something negative? Yeah. On, what, you know, what I think it is, bro, is I think that a lot of people, unfortunately, they think someone else's success is going to limit their chances of success. You know what I mean? I think they see somebody else. That's like, you know, it's like me watching fucking Kevin Hart and go, oh, he's a good stand up comedian. I'm not going to do that now. He's doing it. You know, like, it's just everyone's just got too much ego and pride and. Yeah. I think Australia is beautiful. A lot of beautiful people. It's such an amazing country. I'm proud to be from there. I love that I live there. But I think Australia being a smallish country in terms of population. It's a tall poppy poor, syndrome. Yeah. It's a tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, dude. And it's like people just tend to hate on everyone else. And then it's the same. Look at Nick, Nick Kyrgios, for example, like we were just speaking about. You know, he gets a lot of backlash, a lot of hate. He's an amazing athlete. He's probably a great dude as well just because he's done some silly things. Doesn't mean he's a bad person. The only problem is because he's in the public eye, because he's sort of famous, he's just getting judged and completely criticized for making mistakes that everyone else in this world makes mistakes. It's just that they're not sure. in the public eye to be judged that way. You know, and it's, it's just whatever, dude, it's the way the world is, but fuck it. <laughs> I'm doing well. And I'm all I care about is my family's opinions and me. And that's it. You certainly are, mate. And speaking of success, this brings me to my next segue and uh, career yeah. defining moment. Some of the things that we've done here, mate, let me just, let me just talk about some of the things that are on this sheet right here. Uh, obviously, we touched on the early days, and I, I stayed up last night. I was researching and made sure I <laughs> got all the nitty gritty stuff here. But you've just achieved so much in your life already. You Thank know you what mean. I mean? Like, I think, I think statistically, you're the most followed social media star on Instagram in Australia. That's self-made. Like, you did. I think Tammy Hembro, Tammy Hembro is probably probably right up there. She's doing very fucking well. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think I don't think Tammy does like YouTube and Facebook stuff and yeah. that, but. It's it's she's, she's killing it though, you know. Like one million followers on Instagram, man. Like that's 
and you've done that basically by yourself, which is insane. Over 2 million subscribers on YouTube, 7.7 7 million on Facebook. Um, you know, your videos, have been, your videos have been seen by like literally billions, billions of people. Dude, there was one year, bro, um, me and Shami, when, we, when me and Shami first started our videos together, obviously that was like, that was a big turning point in both our careers. That really spiraled the both of us whilst working together because we, we did a lot of relatable, friendly pranks that everyone does on each other all the time. But then we took it to the next level. We started throwing up on each other, pissing on each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, you would get like ladyboys in Thailand. I'd have a ladyboy, bro, sporting over my face. Like, and there's just fucking balls in my fucking nose. And I'm like, ugh, push it off. And then it's a girl. And I'm like, a girl with oh. balls. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like. And, and all that shit was fun, man. I think there was one year there where we had a billion views in that one year alone on Facebook, just from the shit we were doing. Like, that's how viral it was. But, you know, doing that stuff, you got to expect it to kind of, you know, it got a lot of 50-50 feedback. You know, there's a lot of shit that people say was too far and it was gross. But fuck it, man. Like, I'm, I had fun. <laughs> well, man, look at you now. You've, you've basically made it. So, you know, jokes, yeah. jokes on them. But, like, I mean, with all that in mind, all of the billions of views, all of the followers across all your platforms, the amount of power you wield with your social media, like what's the, what's the most favorite moment from your career so far? Do you have a moment that comes to mind? Oh, shit, dude, that's a good question, man. I don't think I've ever been asked that. In terms of just like career-wise, like? Yeah, just like career-wise, like is there a moment where you've just kind of gone, you know, holy shit, like you're pinching yourself, like or a video, that a particular video that you're really proud um, of? Or, Fuck. Honestly, bro, it sounds kind of weird. Like, I, I can't think of anything. Like, there's little achievements yes. along the way, like being able to help my mum with dentist things and her rant and help my parents out. My, I moved my sister up to where I live because she was struggling in my hometown and she wasn't making much money. She was struggling to pay rent. She didn't like her job. So I said, fuck it, quit your job, move up. I'll employ you. I'll start paying you the same amount that your job pays you. You can live with me rent free, get you out of there, do what you want to do. And that sentimental things like that is, is what I kind of define as like, a good moment in my life, you know, like buying a house. I bought my first house last year and that, that was like overwhelming, dude. I had like watery eyes buying the house. I'm like, fuck man. I'm, I've, I've managed to buy a house, help my family. And, and, and by you know, the way, this house is a serious pad. I'm saying it on Instagram. Like you've got to pull yeah, it's, all right. like, it's a, you've made it, mate. Like ball. You got your own jetty. Who has a jetty in their house? It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, dude. lake or river. I was the only house I looked at, man. I'm just like, I'm kind of weird. Like it's like a fucking, creature of habit dude i like i looked online <clears throat> and i and i saw the house and i said i'm gonna go look at this one and when i looked at it and i was like fuck it i like it i'm gonna get it you know i didn't want to look at a million houses because it just fucks with my head i don't want to like have to worry and stress about which house i like more i was like cool it's got a pool it's on the water it looks nice fuck it i'm getting it <laughs> so in terms of monetizing it what were some of the steps that you took to to you know to because you bought a house man like it's yeah insane, bro. Yeah, dude, i don't know I've, I've always been i've always been smart with money i'm not like a little tight ass it's like i like to help out i do things but you know, like I don't drive nice cars. I don't really wear expensive clothes. Like this was like a twenty dollar top, and, it's, and I don't really wear expensive shit. Like I, I just don't. Like I don't party very often, and if I do, nine times out of ten, it's like we just pre-drink like crazy and go out and get fucked up. And I don't spend a lot of money. Like I took took like in the beginning, actually, bro. I um I took about a year and a half off drinking, and I saved a lot of money. I didn't party. I just wanted to knuckle down. It was just tunnel vision, man. I just wanted to work, work, work. And not like wasting money on materialistic things like jewelry and clothes and partying, things that weren't going to like improve my quality of life, you know. Like, fair enough, it might have made me look cool for that day, but it doesn't like, you know, I just see people spending five, ten grand on like designer clothes and on jewelry. I'm like, fuck, man, do you have a family? Like, how about you give a little bit of money to like your yeah. parents, like people who gave you a life, you know? And I got more important things that I want to spend money on. So I just saved and saved and saved. And I lived like I was broke even when I wasn't broke. Like, I probably had like 50 grand in my brain, my bank. And, you know, I'm still spending a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars a week and cooking on my food at home and being smart with my money. And I just kept on top of everything, dude. And YouTube, like, and Facebook, as you guys know, especially with my content, I, I was, I struggled to ever make money on YouTube. Like I've, yeah. I've got, I've got videos on there with like a hundred million views. I made like five grand, you know, we're like hundred million views to some people here. If you're like James Charles or David Dobry, you're probably making a hundred million. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars off a hundred. Well, easy man. Well, I think what they say, every it, they, they average it out. I think is isn't a million views, roughly $3,000. Is that how they? Yeah. Well, with people that do like beauty stuff and women yeah. and fashion and children content, the, the rates are so high that then yeah. someone that pisses on his friend gets like a hundred dollars every, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> and, and I just, you know, I wasn't going to, 
I wasn't going to tone myself down and change myself because if I, if I focused only on money and I wanted to only make money, I'd go and do makeup tutorials or do fashion or make kitty videos. And it doesn't make me happy, bro. I just put my happiness first and me doing crazy shits, what genuinely makes me happy. And I just said, whether it does or doesn't make money, fuck it. I'm staying true to myself. I'm doing what makes me happy. I'm doing what I find funny. And, and that's how it was. But to answer your question, man, I, I don't really know. I just, like you said, it's this video game life, dude. Like I just, <laughs> I just fucking, I've just been plodding along and it's just, I sell The guy just fucking made it. Like he's just made I sell it. <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, dude, it's, it's, I don't know, it was a big year for me. In 2018, I'm, I went out to, Actually, dude, this is a really big turning point that I, I could touch up on, actually. I, I feel like I'm rambling on a little bit, so just pull me up if I'm talking too much. But 2018 was a big, big turning point for me. So this is kind of middle of the year 2018, and I I'd, I'd kind of was at a good enough level. I was making enough money to live, save, do what I needed to do, and I had like over a million followers on Facebook, and my Instagram was a couple hundred K, and my YouTube was doing well, but I was just lost, dude. I was fucking lost, and I was my mental health problems kind of started around then. I came out of a really bad breakup, and it was a, it was a positive, friendly, mature breakup. And I just, I moved to Brisbane and didn't have a lot of friends and I was just confused. I was just, and another silly thing that I did, bro, from the age of 17 to about 21, like I just took every fucking thing you could take under this, not drugs, but like any steroid you could get your hands on. I just, I would take it. I would just abuse my body. I just wanted to look good. And that's all I fucking cared about, unfortunately. And I'm not afraid to admit that because everyone makes mistakes. So I think what's important is to live and learn, you know, I don't, abuse shit anymore. I don't, I know what I got to do. I get my blood work done. And back then, and all my levels do my hormones like my testosterone would go up and down. My estrogen would go up and I feel like a girl and just emotional, hormonal. I was just lost in life. And then in 2018, I just didn't know what I was doing. I was just not happy. I was over, I was ready to like quit social media pretty much, man. I was like done with it, bro. I just want to go work in personal training and just go back to a regular, what I, what I wanted to do, you know, and just, and I ended up just saying, fuck it, you know, and I left my apartment. I got offered a, a brand deal with Red Bull me and Shami in Austria and it was like five grand and we get flights and covered and stuff. And I said, fuck it, let's do it. We flew out. And while I was there, I, I was like, fuck, we just flew 30 hours. It was like a long trip to get to Austria. And we were there and I said, you know what? Like I got a suitcase with clothes and my phone, like, and I got like three grand in my bank or four grand in my bank. Dude, I didn't have much money either then. And I wasn't being able to save well because I was trying to do vlogs and spending all my money on vlogs. So I like, I was always monthly getting enough to pay my rent to do things. And I have a couple of grand left over. Um, I just said, fuck it. I'm going to London and Shami and I didn't come. They went home. I went to London on my own again. I got a hostel. I paid for a whole week accommodation in a hostel. And then I waited for that money from the five grand brand deal. And that came in. And in that week, I just chilled, wrote down ideas, just kind of like meditated and just trying to get my mind right. And I messaged about 20 influencers in the UK. And the only two people that replied was Kevin Freshwater, who's a legend and Kristen Hanby. And, um, yeah, and Kristen came out from where he lived and we met up. We started filming Instagram videos. And from that day, dude, our Instagram videos just went crazy. Wow. It, and how many followers was, did you have at that point? Were you, were you, I had about 250 or 300K on Instagram. Like, yep, yep, yep. And then in that year alone, dude, from mid uh, 2018 to the end of that year, I, I got to like 2.8 million. I, my Instagram went crazy. Some of my videos were getting like 800,000 nice. likes. Dude. If you go down my feed to like late 2018, mid 2018, some of my videos were getting like, Fuck, dude, like 700,000 likes, 10 million views. And me and Kristen posted a video every day for like four or five months on Instagram. And we were getting piercings, tattoos, jumping in fountains, doing gross shit, eating bad shit. And we just went crazy and it blew our Instagrams up. And then a lot of other brands wanted to work with us. We were meeting a lot of people. And after that, he's like, are you going to go home for a bit, see people? And I was like, fuck it, let's just go to LA and take on LA. Fuck, we didn't, we didn't really know anyone out here. Came out to LA and then we just started doing our videos around the area and went to a few parties, met a few people and we still weren't making crazy money, but this is when Facebook brought in monetization. So this mm -hmm. is a turning point and Facebook started making me really good money. And I started making 20, 30 grand a month on Facebook and yeah, dude. And that was supporting me in LA. We had like edgy birdie as a company that, they pay you pay them and they do your assignments for uni. It's just fucking as weird. I don't know what it's just <laughs> people are struggling. We we're getting paid to promote that, and I just said, "Fuck it, I just needed money." Was it was it called, mate? Was it called? Cool? I wonder if you're there. <laughs> <laughs> we used to get a lot of hate and judgment for promoting something that's just plagiarizing. But I just said, "Look, if you've got a family to feed, you've got money to earn. Fuck it, I'll do it however the fuck I think's right." You know what I mean? Like, for sure. I don't care. 
I'm going to, and whatever, it is what it is. And then, um, <clears throat> Mate, no one's Christmas perfect. Like, Everyone's got a checkered pass. You know that. Exactly, yeah. dude. And we met Vitaly, we filmed with him and then a few other people wanted to film. And then we filmed with like Bradley Martin, who's a big gym personality. We, we were at David Dobrik's like the second day we came to LA pretty much. We were right. at David Dobrik's hanging out. We were in one of his vlogs. We hung out with that Supreme Paddy when he was like blowing up and yeah, dude, that two or three months in LA just, that, that year, 2018 was my biggest game changer. That, that set me yeah, up. Right. Like I was, I went from making like five, 10 grand a month to like 30, 40 grand a month. And, and that, that really held me out, man. And it got me into a good place, came home, saw my mom to grab a dinner. I gave her some money and yeah, dude. And then all of last year I just spent with the boys in Brisbane, like Shami, Marty and Michael. What a feeling, man. Out. What a feeling. Like It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and obviously some of the stuff you do in your vlogs is like, is wild. Like you touched on it before, like getting piercings, tattoos, eating bad shit, jumping in jumping cars. cars. I was riding motorbikes naked in the middle of the street, dude. I was riding a motorbike drunk naked in the middle of the street on Australia Day, double demerits, no helmet. And I was just went past a police station on it. Like just willing to fucking get completely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but man, like some of the stuff that I've seen you do, like it's wild, man. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't have the balls to do it. So like, what, what do you... You know, like, how do you psych yourself up to do some of that stuff? Because there's no way, man. Like, I, would be, I don't have the courage to do that. It's just, I just think everyone's different, man. It's like, you guys, like, you, you guys do some stand-up comedy stuff and that. And it's like, I would like to do that, but it's like, it's, I, I just don't, you know. It's not that I'm scared of doing it. Just, everyone's got their thing. And like I said, you go way back to, like, 10 plus years ago, the jackass stuff, you know. And once you kind of get used to just getting hurt in videos, it's like the pain you realize is like a minute. And you're like, fuck it, yeah. man. Like, you know, piercing the stings there for three seconds, and then you're like, oh, it didn't hurt. Fuck it. Like, yeah. you just tolerate it, man. You just just do what you got to do, and people find it entertaining and gets the views. People enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And some of the things I kind of regret doing, like I jumped on a rake and that gave me a concussion, and I, that didn't help my. Dude, I've taken so many bad head knocks. I just know I'm going to get brain damage Holy eventually. Shit. I just Holy hope it's not until like 50. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, yeah we just suck ourselves up and we just all bounce off each other's energy and we just we just go in man you're a, you're a dude who lives life, life on his terms you know and you've had um that's all so i ever wanted bro that's all so i ever wanted was freedom i just didn't want to answer to anyone i just wanted to be my own boss do my own thing and like you said live life on my own terms that was my that was just all i wanted to do so so run us through a typical day in, in the life of jackson o'doherty because I, as someone who follows you on social media like i can't keep up with you man like you're always doing something <laughs> just always somewhere always yeah. doing something man's firing um well if you like a day in the life of me now like we've started doing only fans work and um dude it's i admit dude i don't just i can't wait to just make a two-hour podcast or my own talking <laughs> show about Dude, it's, it's, it is fucking mind-blowing. This, Man, I, this is what I'm, I'm so keen to talk to you about this. Dude, um, you're the first person I've publicly spoken to about OnlyFans. Wow, man. So before, people, have, people have asked me to go on and they've, some, some dude out here from Miami offered me, me and Maddie, 20 grand each to go and give them a one-hour tutorial on how we did well on OnlyFans. We said, no, I just, we're just saving it, dude. It's like, I just want to like, I want to win in silence. I don't want to shove my success down people's throats and make them feel shitty. And yeah. I want to inspire people. I want to use my hardships, my experiences. I want to use my, like, you know, all of the advice I can give in a positive way. I don't want to be like, hey, look, I've got a fucking Gucci bag in a mansion. I'm a fucking do what I do. Like, I want to be like, yo, I've had depression. I've had anxiety. I've contemplated suicide. I've had hormone problems. I've had family problems. I've had breakups. I'm a human being. I'm the same as everyone else. Just, you know, like it, I've got feelings, I've got emotions, I've got family and friends, just as like everyone else does. And the OnlyFans shit's crazy, bro. It's fucking sick. <laughs> well, man, like how did you, what made you think, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. Like this is, it's such an yeah. interesting, because I think I first saw the post on April 1st. You made a post on your Instagram and I thought it's an April 1st. It it's an April, April Fool's joke. Jax is not being serious. And then you and dropped and it. I didn't even think about it at the time because everyone was thinking that we were just joking around. And then yeah. I was like, no, this isn't a joke, man. I'm literally... And the original plan, mind you, was just I wanted to post my R18 videos. Not porn, but I wanted to post, like, me pissing on... Like, you know, the crazier pranks. <laughs> and, and, like, I wanted to post, like, me, Marty, and Michael. Like, <laughs> when we get drunk, sometimes we just piss in glasses and drink it and do gross shit. And it's like, I wanted to have something because... For the last two years, dude, like this is, this is pretty much why I started OnlyFans, right? Is because the last two years, like that big year, 2018 was amazing. In 2019, I had about 10 videos removed in a week and then I was shadow banned on Instagram and I lost monetization on Facebook for six months and my YouTube had like two strikes, I had one strike left and everything that I was doing was just, because every year that goes on gets more family friendly. 
It does, man. It does. So my, there's not, there's, there's yeah. not much room for my content on social media that I used to do. I had to kind of tone it down a little bit. Like I didn't want to, like I said, I didn't want to tone myself down and not do what I enjoy. I just needed to find like a middle ground that isn't up here fucked up, but it isn't like pussy fucking little kid shit. I wanted to be here. And I just had a hard year, man. Like I, you know, I just, everything I'd post, dude, I'd go out and film for a day or two and I'd spend a few hours editing. I'd spend money. I'd hurt myself. I'd post it an hour later. Boom. Fucking age restricted, removed, fucking deleted. And it kind of just not, not broke me, but it just kind of like, I don't know, man. It's just like made me feel like, fuck this shit. You know, like mm. we're out here bringing in so many people to these platforms and they just, they can't even give us like the opportunity to like just mark our own stuff. So it already has like, it's kind of sensitive content, but then I made a website last year and I had a few people sign up to it so I could post my crazy shit. And that went kind of good. Cause I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to post my stuff that I enjoy and I'll do it on a website and stuff like that. And we just charge $5 a month. And it was kind of good. And after a month or two, I just was like, fuck, I kind of miss that feeling of social media where you can just have everyone engage and everyone comment, yeah. everyone share and, and message you where a website's just limiting it. And then I stopped the website last year and then, this year, man, I was just the same. I went to Miami for, for like a few weeks in January then LA. And this is in January. I just came out of a breakup last year. I was dating a girl for about six months. It's like the second girlfriend I've had. And came out of that and I was just a bit, just, just wanted to just have some fun, party, live, not worry about work for a while. And then I met this, met my girl now, Maddie. And I just said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do OnlyFans together. Because she's been doing it for like two years and she's made phenomenal money. Like oh, really? she's, yeah. she hasn't been doing it with dudes. She's never done guy girl content. She just does like... Like she she works with like Lana Rhodes, Riley Reed, all the biggest porn stars in the world, and they do like solo shows where like they'll just do strip shows. They'll eat things off each other's naked bodies. They'll do dildo shows. They'll do shit like that. And I'm like, I'm super non-judgmental, man. Like I'm so open-minded. Like fuck it. Like in America, that shit's cool. Back home in Australia, you'll get a bit judged and people think it's wrong. But here in America, dude, Dan Bilzerian, look what he's famous for. He's got 50 hot girls around him at all times, just fucking away and throws yeah. parties. And he's, a, he's a legend. He's got like 35 million followers. And yeah. look at Hugh Hefner, the Playboy Mansion stuff. Like everyone loves him. You look at like, there's so many people that do this shit, but people, society just chooses who's cool or doesn't, who isn't. You know what I mean? It's like, and they just choose what's acceptable. And originally I was like, let's just do funny adult content. Like, and I kind of just thought of it as a marketing stunt and said, fuck it, let's just go hard from day one and let's do a flip the switch challenge. Did you ever see the flip the switch challenge we did? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. So I just said, let's start on the flip the switch challenge. Let's someone sent that. it to my group chat, man. I was absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was, everyone sent that around. I said, fuck it. If we're going to do OnlyFans, we don't need to do porn. Let's, let's do it right. Let's go hard. Let's make talking points. Let's make people enjoy it. Like let's do something unique. I haven't seen people do R18 TikTok parodies or sexual mm. comedy skits much because it doesn't last on social media and porn doesn't have the social media following you know what i mean so it's different and we did that and instantly so many fucking people signing up people loving it i got a lot of hate a lot of backlash the first week or two saying it's going to ruin my career and blah blah i said look it ain't going to do shit like i've always been edgy i've always done controversial content I've done crazy stuff i'm not on a tv show i'm not an athlete you know i don't do content for kids like fair enough i've got kids that follow me but i don't post anything too crazy on my instagram that much anymore but and we just did it. And then from there on out, every week, we just get more and more comfortable with crazy and crazier shit. And yeah, now we're fucking on it. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, like, I guess one of the biggest questions I have about that is like, do your parents know about it? Because I don't know if I went yeah. to my dad and I told him, like, yeah. I don't know if he'd scold me or give me a high five. Like, I don't know how he would yeah. react. So like, what, Yeah, my dad's not said a word to me. I don't, my dad just, whatever. My dad's a fucking legend. I just, he whatever he just thinks if i'm making money and i'm happy fuck it. i'm not hurting anybody that's yeah. both my parents rules if i'm not harming anyone or i'm not like doing anything that's extremely like illegal like fuck it dude like i'm not assaulting people i'm not stealing from people i'm not being racist like racist i'm not being like anti-religious i'm not being homophobic i'm literally just exposing my body and my girlfriend's beautiful body online and we're just doing funny naked content funny photo shoots we're collabing with porn star chicks and doing funny shit like we don't really do a lot of sex stuff on there. It's it, like we have, we definitely have, but like man, I, I, think I saw you do one with uh, Riley. What's her name? Riley. Yeah, Reed. Riley Reed. Do I know? Uh, I, I don't think I've seen her ever before, but um, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I don't know who. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's she's huge, dude. She's a fucking sweetheart, man. And so yeah. many people are so so many people are just so judgmental. It's like these porn star girls and these model girls, like. Some of them, are literally some of the most beautiful women I've ever met inside, not their looks, inside, non-judgmental, supportive, caring, kind, 
fun, they're funny, they're just careless. They just, they make some fucking bank too, bro. Like, all these porn stars have multiple houses and businesses. They're smart, dude. Like, you know, like, fuck it, dude. Like, if, if I had the opportunity to be like a hot chick, I would have done porn when I was 18. <laughs> like, fuck it, man. There's these girls out here that are 21 buying mansions in Beverly Hills and living a good life and good on them. Like, if they're proud yeah. and confident, everyone wins. People are getting a service and fuck it. Well, I suppose as well, because um, I know that obviously Maddie has a big following too, and so and obviously everyone knows you do too. So combining that together, I think I, I I swiped up to have a look at the OnlyFans, and I saw you had like so many likes on there, man. Like yeah, so many. So like, how many subscribers do, do you have on that thing? We got we got a lot. <laughs> Dude, that's insane, and they're all paying what like ten dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, they're paying ten dollars a month, and like we we can sell content inside of US? as well. It's US, yeah. Yeah, Dude, right. I, I, I'm gonna towards the end of it. I'm gonna I'll I'm gonna share everything. Every dollar that was made, how I did it, my tips, my advice. I'm gonna show proof of screenshots. Well, I'm gonna. I, 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 I just wanna... I don't want to do it now. I don't want to like I don't want to show off. I don't want to oh, sure. look like I'm. You know, like fair enough. The money's great. Like I wouldn't do this shit for free because I'm I'm flaunting my body. I'm pretty much having sex on camera. I'm showing my fucking dick. My girl's showing herself naked. Like, you know, you, it's like you wouldn't work. You wouldn't go and work at McDonald's and just do it for free. You wouldn't go and yeah. Do, do work for free dude you know and it's that's what it is man and it's just we just said let's just do it let's have a bit of fun with it and just see what happens and the response we got was just fucking insane and we just said let's run with it let's do it and just to be clear like i wouldn't ask you how much money you're making on it because i don't want to be rude or anything like that but like it's life-changing isn't it like what you've been able to achieve on there and, and the and the the, the, the volume it, it will be it yeah. will be man yeah for sure it will be yeah definitely dude and you know like i said oh shit that's all right Fuck, I think someone tried to call me. Am I here? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, dude. Some, someone just tried to call me. I, I, um, and yeah, dude, it's honestly, the way, the way I still look at it, it's the same principle as earlier, dude. It's just now I can help my family, man. Not only can I pay off my family's mortgages, I can probably set them up with a business that's going to bring them in $500 a week, $1,000 a week every week and make them on top of their wages. You know, I, all I want is for my fucking parents to retire five to 10 years earlier and enjoy the life they've worked hard for and um, kick back, man, and just, just chill. So... You know, it makes me super fucking happy. My mum didn't like it at the beginning. You know, I, I called her up. I told her before I did it. I'm very, very, very um, transparent with my parents. You know, I didn't talk to my dad about it. You know, he's a dude. I don't think he gives a fuck. But, you know, like, I think if he was like a lawyer or a businessman or a big, like, like poshy dude, he wouldn't have liked it. But my dad's just a tradie dude, a regular Joe. And he's a fucking great guy, great father. And my mum is a very caring, beautiful woman as well. But, yeah, dude, my mum was just like, what are you doing? Like, my friends are telling me you're doing porn. You can, you're on porn. I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not doing full-blown porn. She's like, yes, you are. And I sent her a hardcore video of this woman getting gangbanged by black dudes. And I said, this is porn. Like, this is hardcore yes. porn. Like, I'm yeah. not doing this shit. Like, here's what I'm doing. And I just showed her, it's like pictures of me and my girlfriend. Like, I didn't show her my dick and stuff, obviously, because that'd be weird. But I showed her the tasteful stuff, you know? <laughs> and my mum just said, look, just whatever you know as long as you're not harming people as long as you're being illegal like just do what makes you happy and and i'll support you and and that's all i could ask for man and it made me really fucking happy that she she didn't like it at the beginning and she trusts me man because i've always been honest with them i've helped them out I've, I've been there for them just like they have for me my whole life and yeah they just after it's just that initial shock phase it's the same with everyone back home everyone saw it girls i used to talk to friends i grew up with like dude are you fucking retarded have you lost the fucking plot are you on drugs like Everyone dude came out of the woodworks and I'm like I'm like sit back, relax and watch where I'm at in a few months. Just just chill. Like yeah. I said, fuck it, man. If you're a good friend, if you're a true friend, like I don't I don't judge you. Like people think I don't know if it sounds wrong or not, but people think it's morally wrong to do this sort of stuff. But to me, bro, what's morally wrong is is not respecting yourself enough to do stuff that makes you happy. What's morally wrong is waking up to a job and going, Oh fuck, I don't want to go to work today. That's not respecting yourself. People think mm. I'm not respecting myself and my girlfriend because we're showing ourselves naked, but I'm, I don't give a shit. I love the way I look. So does my girlfriend. Like, I'm proud of what I look. Dude, my dick's like this fucking big. <laughs> and I'm rocking it. I'm fucking shaking it around. I'm getting pictures. I don't care, dude. Like, I was born with that. I can't change that. Like, I'll embrace that and whatever. But I think it's morally wrong to go to a job to work for people you don't like and do things you don't like to make money that isn't going to set you up for life. And initially, you know, you study for 15 to 20 years, you go and work for 30 to 40 years. And then by the time you're 60, then you can enjoy your hard, hard work. Like, fuck that. I don't, 
if I get to 60, I, I want to have done everything. I'm not waiting to that age to retire and then go traveling around the world on a yacht. Fuck that shit. You know, I want to, yeah. I want to live a good life, man. And, and people, people were saying to me, this is wrong. This is that. I'm like, what do you do for work? I'm like, oh, I work in this office. I'm like, do you like it? Like, no, I hate it. I'm like, that's morally wrong. Why did you do that to yourself? Do you, yeah. do you love yourself? Do you respect yeah. yourself? Dude, what makes you happy? Oh, I love to draw. Fuck it then, dude. Get on Centrelink. Go and study art for the next year. Who cares if you're broke for a year or two? Go study art. Go paint pictures. Go and work for someone that will like appreciate you. Like whatever it is you want to do, whether it's acting, singing, fucking be a teacher, be a personal trainer. There's there's something for everyone. But there's kids, there's fat kids making millions of dollars a month playing video games inside their fucking bedroom. No, I know. There man. is something for everyone, dude. There is something mm. for everyone. Yeah, man. And that's really inspirational. And I, I agree with that sentiment a lot. Like I see a lot of people who hate their jobs, who are really not happy with where they're at, but they yeah. feel almost compelled to continue down that path because something's yeah. going It's comfortable, man. It, it's safe. It's the safe route, you know? Yeah, that's it. They feel it's like something that there's no way out. But, but what you're saying is, which I think is really good, which I think will resonate with a lot of people is there's always a way out. You don't have to feel oh, trapped. Always do. There always is. to feel like you, you can't do something yeah. else. Like, and I think it's a really powerful message that you're sharing. There. Dude, I didn't, I didn't have it any, any different to most people, man. Like if you compare the average show, I was probably below average. Like we never had money, bro. Like we couldn't go on like great holidays. We couldn't go out to restaurants. We couldn't like my neighbors would have beautiful Christmas presents all the time. And I wouldn't, you know, it's just, you, it's, it's, just, it's just how you are as a person, man. You can either let that shit like break you or you can let it make you, bro. And I let it make me, you know what I mean? I let it make me. And I'm like, I'm, I've, I've been poor as fuck and had nothing. And now I'm here and I choose this kind of life. Like Wolf of Wall Street guy says, I choose this life every fucking time. And it's not because yeah. I can go out and eat good food and fucking do it all. Just because my mother and father now can fucking kick back. I can help them. I don't have to stress if I need medical bills or if something goes wrong, like I've got the money they're saved, dude. I can... I can provide for my fucking family, dude. And that's, that's the most rewarding, all parties, celebrities, houses, materialistic shit aside, that's, that's the number one thing in my life is to look after those who looked after you. And I'm doing it, man. So I've achieved basically everything I wanted to achieve, man. I'm only 26 and I know it sounds kind of minor, but it's like my family's proud of me. I can support them and there's nothing else I want to do, man. I just want to live my life and be like, happy. And you're such an interesting character, man, because like, you know, you've got your prank videos, you've got your OnlyFans stuff. And then when I look at your Instagram, you share like really candid insights into like yeah. uh, stuff to do with mental yeah, health. Yeah, dude, I'm a, deep, I'm a deep person, bro. I get, yeah. I get real. Like, I, dude, I've been like, I've probably done micro dosing of shrooms probably 30 times in the last two years. And that's, that's rewired my brain to a very optimistic way of thinking. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, he does shrooms. He's like a hippie fucking drug addict. But that's not how it is, dude. In America, they're prescribing people with micro doses of shrooms instead of antidepressants because it has the same effect on your serotonin and it rewires your brain chemistry, like all the neurons and all the crazy shit that's going on. And it just, it just changes your way of thinking. And, and honestly, that stuff helped me out a lot, dude, with, because I've been on medication for about a year now. It was Zoloft, sertraline to people who don't know what Zoloft is. And, and I needed a medication about a year ago from some shit that I was going through. I tried to not use medication for a long time because I let my pride, like, I'm like, oh, I'm a fucking big, strong dude. I don't need medication. It's just a magic pill. It ain't going to work. And I tried everything imaginable, dude. And it got to the point where suicidal thoughts were a weekly thing. And, then, you know, people will think, oh, but you, you do what you love for work. You got good friends and family. You got money. You got this. What, why would you be like that? But people don't realize it's a chemical imbalance. You know, it's not, it's not a matter of positive and negative thinking. Because I'm, I'm just as positive as everyone else. Dude. I'm a very positive person. And it's, it's a chemical imbalance. And that can come from anything, dude. Like, People can just be born with different imbalances. You can get it from head knocks. You can, from drug abuse, steroid abuse, hormone changes, just everything, man. And, and I had some bad chemical imbalances in my brain and I just got on a medication and, and it's really helped me. It pretty much probably saved my life, dude. Like, I'm, and now I'm here and my, my, my dose is very fucking low. I'm very close to just stopping using it. And I've never felt happier, dude. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm really, really good. I'm really happy. It's, it's good. It's happy days. <laughs> well, man, I think the question I have for you is like, cause, cause your content differs so much. You do so much different stuff on your channel and you, you post so many different sides of yourself. What's the favorite type? What's your favorite type of content that you like to do that you personally? Do? I think vlogging. I love doing yeah. vlogs. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like doing vlogs, but the problem with doing vlogs in Australia is you, you're kind of limited because you like even for example marty and michael my two friends i'm not sure like they're doing pretty well like they they went to top golf on the weekend they're taking stories of each other just playing they were just having a few beers they weren't being loud they weren't swearing they weren't bragging and the managers walked out 
if you guys take an Instagram story here, we're gonna have to kick you out. And I'm just like, they're like, why? Like, what are doing? It's discrimination, man. I'm not doing anything wrong, you know? And here, if you pull a phone out, though, the managers will go, yo, 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 if you, if you post us and tag us, everything's on us, beers for free, have fun, like nice. break some shit, fucking have fun, get crazy. And, nice. But back home, it's like, if you have a camera in public, everyone's like, it's like it's a fucking machine gun, bro. Everyone's yeah. scared of it. Like yeah. people just like, you walk into a store and everyone's like, no, 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 no filming, no filming, no filming. I'm like, what are we doing? They're like, Fine, and it's you know? funny you could talk about the cultural differences between america and australia yeah. forever i mean it, it, it's insane it's it's that, that, i would definitely choose to live in australia i definitely mm. rather like in terms of work i think america everyone knows america is the place to be but in terms of your well-being for our industry for film i think yeah america yeah is and a good quality of life you know you've got australia with all the beautiful beaches and the sun the weather the people the restaurants and the food and we got good healthcare out there, dude. You know, and America's pretty fucked for healthcare. Like, if you need an ambulance here, it's ten grand to get in an ambulance. Like, back home, you get looked after. You know, if you like, my immigration lawyer over here told me one of his clients about two years ago didn't have health insurance, and his wife had to go to hospital for like a appendicitis or something, had to get her appendix removed, and they got hit with a hundred and thirty thousand dollar bill because she didn't have health insurance. Like, dude, if that was in Australia, it'd probably be a couple of grand at the very most. Mm. Dude, that's insane. Yeah, they, they've got some yeah. real health. They've both got their pros and cons. And, you know, I love making vlogs because I feel like that's my truest form, you know? Doing like <clears throat> doing like one to three minute videos for Instagram and Facebook and YouTube is fun. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love doing that. But you don't get to show so much of your personality and who you are. And that's why I like to do some podcasts and do like rants on my Instagram stories. That's me showing me. And I think doing the crazy stuff, that shows my crazy side and the shit I enjoy doing. But it's just, you know, quick one minute, two minute video of me just doing fucked up shit where doing a vlog it's like a 10 to 20 minute it's like a your own reality show you can be you you can show your life you can do crazy shit as well and i like doing vlogs i made a vlog channel about a year and a half ago and, and that went really fucking good like people love my vlogs and i ended up stopping because i moved obviously overseas when that when that kind of started for a while and yeah dude vlogs vlogs for sure i definitely enjoy but i enjoy everything man i enjoy all all aspects of making content so well speaking of vlogging like you you've hung out with like some of the one of the biggest vloggers in the world like logan paul jake paul you know as i was saying earlier dan bilzerian all these dude, i get so much hate whenever i'm around those boys like not so much like, dan but dude when i was around logan and jake like in vegas last year we all stayed in the same penthouse with the racker racker boys you, you know the racker boys huh yeah yeah, yeah. i've never met them but yeah. obviously i know of them yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. me the racker racker twins Kristen. we all stayed in the same penthouses like logan and jake we hung out and dude they're just normal guys bro jake's a lot cooler than logan as well jake's I like them both. They were both nice to me. They showed me a lot of love. They were really friendly and cool. But, dude, you'd think from the outside in, from the content, you'd think Jake would be the dick and, and would just be a fucking asshole and Logan would be cool and laid back. But it's the opposite, man. Like, well, I mean, Logan ain't a dick, but Jake will just take you in and talk to you, be friendly. It's just, it's all just a big act for social media, man, with a lot of these American people out here. And yeah. Whatever, whatever dude. Like, whatever they've got to do, man. Yeah, man. So, like, have you ever, what's, what's the biggest, like, pinching yourself moment because like you've partied with all these guys you've hung out with like huge celebrities like you've done crazy things like have you been at one of dan bilzerian's parties have you been somewhere in america where you're trying to go on man how am i even here like i don't know dude it's like it's like i've always kind of visualized myself doing cool things and big things and fun stuff and it's like to me like i said earlier like materialistic things and the people and these things it's like i don't i think like other than Dan Bilzerian, like and Conor McGregor, I don't really follow like any celebrities. Like mm. I don't get that excited over that stuff, dude. Like you know George Masvidal in the UFC and Max Holloway and yeah. all these UFC fighters follow me, and I've spoken to so many of them, and and even that's like I'm like fuck, this is pretty sick. Actually, yeah. you know what? Fucking, it's, it's, it's funny you say this. Yesterday, Conor McGregor liked a comment that I left on his Instagram post. So sick, that was kind of cool. That's so that was kind of cool. Yeah, I haven't really like fangirled over anything, and when I saw that pop up on my screen, I was like, wait. Is this fucking like, is this legit? Or is this like, and I thought every was, chance he's watched your videos as well. He's probably seen your stuff. He's probably seen some of them, yeah. man. Like he, like, cause they go around and they do the rounds and he doesn't follow me or anything, but I mean, there's a good chance people have seen, seen them. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's crazy because like, I know people like in my friendship circle that would fucking kill someone to go and party with Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> well, when Dan, when, <clears throat> when Dan Bilzerian followed me, I thought like that was pretty sick. I thought like he's a fucking legend. He's a cool dude. And he's a boy, mate. everyone knows with him. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like the modern day fucking playboy dude, man. But cool. Like he just does like, he's got, like guns and shit, flies around in jets. Like <laughs> Hugh Hefner was like a classy gentleman and he was a fucking gangster as well. But like yeah. Dan Bilzerian is more relatable because he's still kind of young and, he's, and yeah. he's doing what every young dude wants to do. Where Hugh Hefner was always looked at as old because he was always old. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. that dude was born 70. 
that's true, man. That's true. But um, yeah, dude, there's been some, there's been some cool shit, man. And like, even like getting to stay in like crazy nice hotels for free and shit. I'm, I'm sending all pictures to my mum and dad, and they're like, whoa, like. And I just want to bring them out here and show them, but it's like they got to work, and it's harder. It's easier said than done. But there's a lot of little things along the way that I'm, I'm always grateful for things, but I also don't get too invested in it to where I don't want to get caught up in that shit, dude. You know, like. Well, I mean, one of the last things I want to talk to you about, because, you know, thanks for coming on. You've been very generous in your time. And Appreciate it, dude. Time, but My pleasure. I, I want to talk about a couple of your goals moving forward. Before we get to that, um, you, you wield so much power at, at your disposal now. Like, you've got a huge audience. Um, and you've, you mentioned earlier that you've battled some demons and you've been able to overcome some, some mental health issues. So what's, what's something that you would say to, to, to the people who are maybe watching this, struggling with some, some, some mental health issues and how, how do they get Yeah, <clears throat> for sure, man. I think like, you just got to start small, dude. I feel like I get really bad in a mental rut when I don't have a routine. I feel when I don't have anything to do, I feel like when I'm not like working on something or I'm not doing something like I feel sitting around not doing anything is where things really brew badly. Like, cause if you've got a routine, if you like the night before, you're like, okay, I'm going to wake up at 7am to my alarm, shower, breakfast, gym, get back, get my shit together. Then it's 9, 10am. I'm going to go and meet with this person at 11 to work and film. And then you get back at two or three and then I'm going to do some editing and then I'm going to cook dinner and watch a movie. You don't have time to think about your problems cause you're busy. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be in the back of your head. And I know it's easier said than done cause I've been there a lot of times and, you just got to get busy. Like if you've got nothing to do that day, get out and go for a run, listen to music, meditate, read a book, fucking watch a cool movie. Dude, you can jump on YouTube and you could spend a few hours on there and come out with your fucking life change. There's so many interesting, amazing documentaries and, and short like films and videos about mental health and how to help yourself. And I watched a lot of those things as well. And, but initially I think it comes down to you. You need to want to help you. You can't just always say not do anything. You know, it starts with small things like things do a 10 minute breathing exercise every day. Have you heard of Wim Hof before? I have. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's a, I do, I do Wim Hof. Yeah. And it's about a 12 or 13 minute breathing exercise. I do that every day. I do that every single day without fail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I can hold my breath for like, I can hold my breath nearly four minutes now. Dude, I, can, I held it for like three minutes and 40 seconds, like last week. <laughs> and like, yeah, from, from doing that, man. And, and when you're done, bro, you're all tingling and you've got this euphoric feeling and you're just like, Whoa, fuck. I feel good. You're like, you feel like you're just a big fucking 12 inch cock and you just want to, fuck <laughs> and like yeah dude i just think like diet bro diet's fucking important man and even when i went plant-based for a few months that made me feel great you know i went vegan for like two or three months and it might sound kind of cruel on my behalf but i didn't do it because i'm a hippie and i want to save the world and the animals i just did it because i wanted to see the health benefits yeah. and and i felt great because all the hormones that are pumped into the foods will probably trigger things in your body as well there's a lot of documentaries i could dude i could talk for days about this shit like um yeah like healthy food sunlight good sleep exercise speaking to positive people watching like influential like educational things to, to grow as a character and learn new things have a routine you know don't take drugs don't drink like say if you're going to take drugs just microdose shrooms that's the only thing that i would ever ever recommend i feel like marijuana can also make people feel worse it's legal here in america and you know i've i've had it loads of times out here since i've been here but i don't smoke i just do the edibles but mm. honestly dude like just, it's like the quote Jim Carrey said, like, you know, people are depressed, but if you sit back and realize you're not getting any sunlight, you need vitamin D, you need yeah. fresh air, go to the beach, the, the beach, the ocean, the salt water and the sand and the trees I mean, is scientifically proven to instantly calm you, make you feel good. Go down and meditate by the beach. Like who cares if a hundred people are looking at you thinking you're fucking weird. Are they going to be there to help you? Are they going to feed you? Are they going to fucking no? go down and put your earphones in, shut off from the walls, lean against a tree and breathe and, Think about what you're grateful for. Think about you've got two legs. You can still walk. You don't have, you're not in a wheelchair. You don't have a, like a disability. You don't, you've got family. You've got friends. You live in a great, safe country. Like, dude, there's people in Yemen right now. There's like one kid dying every like hour, like a fucking four-year-old kid. And people in Australia are complaining about such, like everywhere in the world, not just Australia. People, because I've been there, dude. I've complained about some very petty shit, but you've just got to, be grateful, man. You've got to sit back and say, fuck, dude, I could have it so much worse. I'm doing better than 90% of the world right now. Just, I might not be making a lot of money. I might not have a great job. I might not have many friends. I might be ugly, whatever. But, you know, I'm still doing a lot better than people. And I think healthy foods, meditating and like, and working out is a very good start to improving your mental space. Definitely. Yeah. So perspective is a massive thing there. For you. Perspective for sure, man. You need to change your thoughts. And it's so fucking hard, dude. Like, 
Oh, it is. It, some for some like, people, uh, it's possible. You know, you know Gary V. <laughs> Gary V, yeah. Yeah, he's like, you gotta change your fucking perspective. You gotta fucking change your thoughts, man. You can't be fucking thinking like that, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gary V is cool, man. I don't know if I think I follow Gary V. He's, he's pretty cool, dude. He's powerful. But I watch a lot of things, man. I watch like a lot of famous people speak. I watch a lot of athletes, a lot of entrepreneurs speak about their hardships. Like, you look at like JK Rowling, she was practically like fucking homeless and she comes out with Harry Potter and now she's a yeah. billionaire pretty much. Look yeah, at like man. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. He was homeless and he got into Rocky when he was like 30. Look at, there's so many, like, there's no, if you think you're too old to do something, like Morgan Freeman didn't get a main role in a movie till he was like 60, you know? It's amazing, like, isn't it? A, yeah. He just, this perspective is everything, bro. Like you're never too old, you're never too young. Like you can, and even if you like have it really bad, even if you're like in a wheelchair, dude, I've seen disabled people in Nitro Circus backflipping their fucking wheelchairs. Like you just gotta, you just gotta grab life by the fucking clit and make the most of it, you know? Yeah, man. Well, I mean, look, that's a, it's a, it's a good message. I mean, you've got to. I'm sorry, dude. Do... I talk so much shit. I just sit here and ramble, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to, you've got to do what makes you happy. But man, I guess for me now, I'm looking at some of the stuff that you've done and and um, getting to know you as a person. Where do you see yourself, you know, in the future? What what's next for Jackson O'Doherty? I think I just want to like sit inside and eat food and get really fat doing do nothing. I'm sorry. Um, I don't even know, dude. Like. Honestly, like, I'm, I've still got plenty of years left in me. I'm probably going to continue making content for a long time, dude, whether that's moving and just doing some acting roles down the track. You never know. Like, I just feel I just feel good, man. I just feel confident. I feel happy. I feel free. I just feel like anything I want to do, I can go and do it, man. I feel like if I put the work in, if I stay consistent and I'm confident, dude, I, I feel like I can pretty much do anything that I want to do kind of thing, you know? And I've always wanted to do acting. I've always wanted to get into certain roles in movies, but it's never been at the top of my list, you know? The top of my list was to, like, create financial freedom first and help my family. And, you know, I own a house now, and me and my girl are kind of buying a house here in California now. And, yeah, dude, like, we're just... It's unreal. I know, dude. Like, I just, it's unreal. Yeah, I yeah. like to think ahead, but I don't like to think too far ahead, you know? Like, mm. I find thinking too far ahead just gets you anxious, man. You just overthink and you worry. Like, live in the moment and just plan little bits by little bits. Just plan the next month or two, you know, just, just work out what you want to do. Have big goals for life, but don't constantly be thinking about like, fuck, where am I going to be in 10, 20 years? Like, am I going to, cause it just creates unnecessary worry, which leads to bad thinking. And then you just get lazy. You don't want to do anything. Like just yeah. live in the moment, do the best you can do with every day you get given, man. Like your life can get taken like that, dude. Like honestly, life's so short. Like, and you just don't know what's going to happen. You could die in a fucking car crash. You could drown. You could die in your sleep. But people, I know it sounds kind of deep, but it's just, Dude, like, I've got this one life, man. I'm, I'm going to make the most of it. And I could die a happy man pretty much today, bro. And I'm, just, I'm proud to say that. <laughs> well, Jackson, mate, honestly, man, uh, I just wanted to say thanks so much for coming on. And uh, man, it was man, a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You've been so supportive of my comedy and my videos and stuff. And sure, uh, dude, you've, always, you've always been really, really nice to me too, dude. Like a lot of influencers in Australia and a lot of people like have, have always kind of try to get in there and just say negative shit and be salty about things and be weird and I've, I've not done anything wrong by anyone back home and i've always been supportive to everybody i i want the whole fucking world to win i want everyone to be happy i just want everyone to fucking love each other and be kind and win and be happy in their own way and that's all i've ever wanted to do and but yeah like you and isaac butterfield and my few friends back home are like there's not many other people that do social media back home that are actually supportive and nice about things and and, and give good feedback and, and have a chat and stuff like that. And, and that's why I appreciate it all. That's why I said that's fucking do a podcast, dude. And it's been great. Yeah. No, man, it's been awesome. And like mad respect to you, man, living life on your terms, oh, yeah. doing, doing the things you want to do. And man, like you can't look at you and say you're not inspirational, mate. You're an inspiration. You've, you've made I might not be doing things that people want to do, but I'm, I've definitely got a lot of knowledge in my head and a lot of things that hopefully I can give advice to people to do what they want to do, you know? Like, well, man, I and, think the most important thing about you and something that I've observed is you've got a big heart, man. You know, like you yeah. don't have to give your, your family this, this head start. You don't have to be spending the money the way that you are. But, you know, you, you're doing this because it's like almost like a selfless act. And I think that's um, really admirable. Yeah, man. it's just... Awesome. Yeah. I see a lot of influencers out here, dude, and they're making crazy money and their fucking families are still struggling, eating shitty food and just paying rent. I'm like, yeah. you're walking around in like $100,000 of jewelry driving a Lamborghini, but what about like every, the family that gave you everything? You wouldn't be able to have that Lamborghini. You wouldn't be able to wear these things and go to these parties if your family didn't raise you and feed you. Like, look after people, man. Don't be a, don't be a dick. Like, it's just, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I see a lot of people, but yeah, hopefully when I get back to Australia, man, you and me can make some OnlyFans content. Everyone wants to see a guy, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, mate, 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 you say you say your jobs are small, mate. Mine's micro as well, mate. <laughs> Dude, it can't get any smaller, bro. Dude, when it's cold, mine's inside me, bro. I, I want to go for the Guinness World Book of Records, but I also don't want that that actual name. You know, I don't want to be known as that. <laughs> well, brother, you're an absolute legend. Um, all the best with everything you want in your future, and um, I hope you have massive success, man. You deserve it. You're good. Appreciate girl. that a lot, man. It means the world. You too, bro. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment or a like and subscribe to my channel to make sure you stay notified every time I upload a video. I've got some huge guests lined up on the Elliot Learning Podcast. Got some big gags on the way. Thanks for your support and I'll see you soon. Cheers.